So I recently made the switch from a Windows laptop to this MacBook Pro and it's been a pretty good experience so far with great performance, great battery life and an amazing anti-reflective screen. However, it hasn't all been smooth sailing with it taking me a little bit longer to adapt to macOS than I anticipated. There's just a lot of muscle memory from how I used to use Windows. Now, I could take my time to learn my way around macOS and retrain my muscle memory, but I'm a creature of habit. Plus, what kind of Windows guy would I be if I didn't try and find solutions to my problems with alternative apps? So if you're like me struggling a little bit to adapt to macOS, then in this video, I'm going to show you five simple but powerful ways to make your macOS experience feel more like the Windows environment you're used to. First things first, let's talk about the keyboard, or more specifically, keyboard shortcuts. If you're like me, your fingers already have the muscle memory for things like Control C or Control V for copy and pasting. But on an Apple keyboard, a lot of the same functions are moved to the command button, which is not in the corner location. And it feels like finger gymnastics trying to use my thumb and fingers to copy and paste. Luckily, you're able to change the button configuration around to make it feel more like Windows. What you need to do is head into System Settings, Keyboard, Keyboard Shortcuts, then Modifier Keys. Here, you can change around what the Globe, Control, Option and Command keys do. So for my configuration, I set the globe button to command, the control to globe. I left the option key the same and command is my control button. Now it's much easier to do copy and paste or any of the other muscle memory shortcuts like control F to find text that you might be used to on Windows. Next is fixing the alt tab functionality. You'll recall that in Windows, alt tab would allow you to swap between all the open windows on your machine. But with Mac OS, it only swaps between applications, not individual windows. This can be annoying when you're working off different apps or switching between windows a lot. To remedy this, you can download the free app aptly named Alt Tab. It simulates the exact same experience you would have on Windows when you press the Alt and Tab buttons, or in this case, the Command and Tab buttons. The visual layout is basically the same as what you would experience on Windows, tabbing through each window to select the one you want to view. You can actually customize what button combination you would like to use to trigger this, or even use a gesture if you want to. But again, the muscle memory in me just leaves it to the command and tab button. The only other thing you would need to decide on is if you wanted to see just the windows in the current space you're in, or if you want to see all the windows on all spaces. I've got mine to just the current space, but it's great that it gives you the ability to choose. It's a small change that has a massive impact on your productivity especially for those of us who are constantly juggling multiple tasks. These next two have to do with how you use a third-party mouse. And they might seem minor, but it can be a big deal for those Windows users switching over to a Mac. The first one is the scrolling direction of the wheel. When you use a mouse with a scroll wheel on Windows, typically if you scroll down on the wheel, content will also go down. However, when you use that same mouse on a Mac OS, the scroll wheel works in reverse. That's because by default, Mac OS has what it calls natural scrolling for its mouse and trackpad, which mimics how you would scroll on a touchscreen. In other words, swiping up on the trackpad moves the content down and swiping down moves the content up. And while I like that for my trackpad, it doesn't feel right on my mouse. What's also ridiculous is that in the settings, there is the options to turn off natural scrolling for the mouse. But if you do that, it also turns off natural scrolling for the trackpad as well. Why are there two switches in the settings in separate sections of the menu that do the exact same thing? The solution to all this madness is another little free app called Scroll Reverser. It will override the default scrolling direction for your mouse and allow you to have the scroll wheel work the way you're used to having it on Windows, but also keep the natural scrolling on your MacBook's trackpad. It's the best of both worlds and solves a major annoyance for many new Mac users. The second tip for your third-party mouse is side button functionality. Most people's side buttons on Windows are used for going back and forth between pages on a website or in applications, unless you've programmed them to do something else. Unfortunately, they seem to be disabled with macOS. Now, I've had a couple of people say the side buttons on their mouse works just fine with macOS, so this is really only for those people whose mouse does not. But you can solve this problem with the aptly named app called Sensible Side Buttons. This free solution literally activates the buttons on your mouse to work properly so you can go back and forth with ease like you would normally on a Windows. Finally, this last solution is my favorite and probably the best quality of life improvement I found for myself. One of the most beloved features of modern Windows is the ability to snap Windows into position, 
when you drag it to the corners or the side of your screen and have it automatically fill out predefined sizes like half the screen or a quarter of the screen or use the presets from the drop down tab. It's incredibly useful for keeping your workspace organized, allowing you to see things side by side and maximize your screen real estate, even more so if you use a larger monitor like an ultra wide. And while macOS now has a similar split screen functionality as Windows, I find it not as flexible and a little bit limited in what it can do. Not being able to even snap a window into position when you drag it to the sides of the screen or maximize when you drag it to the top. This is where Magnet comes in. It's a paid app that's available on the Mac App Store for a couple of dollars, but it's worth every penny for the functionality it provides. With Magnet, you can drag your windows to the edge of your screen and it will automatically snap to fill half of the screen, just like Windows. Or drag it to the top and it will maximize the whole screen. But what makes Magnet worth paying for is the fact that you can customize the size of the windows themselves, which is infinitely more usable with an ultra-wide monitor. So if you wanted to display your windows in thirds, you can. Maybe into quarters? Also doable. What about one half on the left and two quarters on the right? Or one half in the middle and a quarter on each side? Or even crazier, why not have six windows open at the exact same time? Although whoever does this has to be a mad genius to be able to view all of those windows at the same time. There are even options for you to break up your screen into sections if you use a screen vertically as well. How you want to customize your screen is up to you, and you can even use keyboard shortcuts to activate them as well. Even better is the fact that you can also set up the specific locations you need to drag your windows to, to achieve the predefined window sizes. It's the perfect tool to help with managing your windows and I highly recommend it. And there you have it, five simple ways that I found to make my transition, and hopefully yours, from Windows to Mac OS that much easier to handle by tweaking a few keyboard shortcuts, downloading some free apps, and spending a cup of coffee on another, you can make your Mac feel a little bit more homely like you're used to. Now the goal isn't to obviously turn your Mac into a Windows clone, but to bridge the gap and make you feel a little bit more comfortable and productive in your new environment. I've left the links to all the apps I mentioned in the description down below. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. And if you found your own ways or tips and tricks to make macOS feel more homely for you, feel free to drop them down below in the comments. Thanks again for staying until the end. Until next time, I'll see you in the next video.